problem 2.5 of chapter 2, we'd like to find F1 magnitude and direction, and they give us the resultant, and they tell us that the resultant force has a magnitude of 450 newtons along the positive axis U. So what do we do? First of all, we want to write the expressions of each of our forces in terms of components. So I will write this as a vector, which is the magnitude F1 and the direction. As you see, this is, will be the Fx1 and Fy1. The Fx1 will be the opposite of this triangle, and as you know, the sine is defined as the opposite divided by the hypotenuse, so that will be the sine. So it will be sine of phi in I in the positive direction. And then the y will be F1 cosine of phi. And that will be all in, in, in j direction, and that will be all in newtons. F2, as a vector, as you see, is along x-axis, so it does not have y component. It will be only be 200 in i. And then F3, as a vector, will have two components. We'll have the x component and the y component. The x component, this angle is given, as you see the figure in the slide, this angle is given, this is 5, and this is 12, and this is 13. So when you have that kind of triangle, where this is 5, this is 12, and this is 13, this angle over here, we can say that the sine of this angle is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse, and the cosine will be the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. So we can say that this is 260 times. When we want to find the x component will be the opposite divided by the hypotenuse, so I say 5 over 13 in the i direction, and it's positive, and the y is negative, so it's 260, and will be cosine, and we already say that the cosine is 12 over 13 in j direction. So we have all the components of our vectors, so to find the resultant we have to add all these vectors, in the, so it will be in the i direction and in the j direction. Right? And this one right here will be found by adding all the components in the i direction, and this one over here will be adding all the components in the y direction. So we have that the resultant is equals. Adding the forces in the i direction is give me F1 sine of phi plus 200 plus this one right here. 260 divided by 13 multiplied by 5 is 100, and this is all in i direction. And in y, we have f1 cosine of phi, and as you see, f2 doesn't have any components in y in, in j, right? So we have this one right here, negative 240 in j. And this over here is equals to what we were told, right? And we were told that the magnitude of the resultant force is 450 along the u-axis. So as you see, this is the resultant force, and I have a resultant force in x and resultant force in y. Therefore, it's 450, and to get the 
X component is the adjacent, so it's cosine of 30. And to get the Y component is the sine of X. Okay, so we will make those two equal. So in I direction, I can say that this over here is equal to that over here. So I will say that this is F1 sine of phi plus 300 is equal to 450. And cosine of 30, we know that is square root of 3 over 2. So we have this first equation. And my second equation is in J direction. And this is this one right here. F1 cosine of phi minus 240 will be equals to 450 times sine of 30, which is 1 half. Okay, as you see, we can, from here, we can solve for sine, and then we can, we can solve actually for F1 sine of phi which is equals to 89.71. Please, even though I don't write all the decimals, I always round, I do save in my calculator all the value, all the decimals. Because if we round in every single step, at the end our result will be far off and at least 10 or 20% far off the answer. So I need to work at least with five decimals. I don't have to write them, but I do have to keep them in my calculator. So if we divide these two expressions, we get the tangent. Let me do that. This is usually, be careful, your calculators could be in radians or in degrees. If you get the value in radians, you have to convert that to degrees. And this is 10 to 9. This is the value that I get in degrees. And once we have found this angle, well, we just plug in that inside. All cosine, we will get the same answer. It doesn't matter which equation we use. And we get the answer that F1 is equals to 473.5 and that's how we solve this problem.